Hey guys, Brian with VetSource back again with a little update for you. Uh, we're down here in Southeast Texas uh, Saturday after Thanksgiving. Hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving here in the United States if that's where you're at. Uh, other parts of the world, hopefully uh, your day was productive or weekend. So today I'm gonna kinda do a little uh, how-to video for you guys on the braking systems on uh, C2, mid C2s to all C3 Corvettes, which if you're the Corvette geek or not the Corvette geek, that would be anything Corvette from 1965 to uh, 1982. Now, Corvettes up until 1965 used a drum braking system. They did not have uh, disc brakes, amazingly enough, even with all the high performance uh, accoutrements and things they had on them. So uh, what I'm gonna talk about today a little bit is how you basically are gonna have to look at, uh, or excuse me while I fix this, get that secure. So uh, how you can troubleshoot your braking system on the Corvette. So uh, this is the uh, flame orange 1976 Stingray here that I just pulled out of storage. Uh, <laughs> believe it or not, in this neck of the woods, I actually use this as the winter car. Uh, because down here where we're at in Southeast Texas, our winters are usually pretty mild. We've had some cold days, but nothing too bad. So this is the last of what I consider the original Stingrays, okay? Now, uh, Stingrays from 1963 to 1967 uh, is two words, Sting and then Ray, and then it was dropped from the Corvette nameplate in 68 and brought back in 1969 through 76 as Stingray, one word. Uh, so you've got the new Stingrays, which don't get me wrong, I love new Corvettes, guys, but they aren't really Stingrays to me, only because it's more of a nameplate. This actually, if you see this body, that's the Stingray shape, okay, the flared back. In fact, while this thing even is kind of a dog as far as horsepower is concerned, uh, this is just the most fabulous body style that came out, uh, you know, 68 all the way up through 82. I like the mid-70s uh, just because they've got a clean look with the uh, notched back and everything. Uh, I, like, I, I really do like chrome upper cars a little bit better, but for cruisers, I like these. And truth is, this is absolutely my favorite color on a Corvette. Looks like a bottle of uh, Orange Crush in the light. Uh, in fact, um, my son refers to it as it looks like he could just lick it and taste Orange Crush, so it's quite funny. But uh, anyway, I pulled this one out of storage because I don't use it often. But I figured, hey, if we have a mild winter, let's go ahead and, and make it our winter car, only to discover a common thing that goes wrong with uh, C3 and C2 Corvettes of this era is the brakes. Now, I'm going to show you real quick. You haven't seen this before. Um, you know, you've got your basic instrument stack up on the Corvettes and tilt telly. It's one of the nice features about them. Even in the mid-70s, you had a tilt and you had a telescopic co column. It would come back and forth to you with a lock ring there. But let me show you here. So uh, in 65, they started with Corvettes featured a dual piston, four piston caliper disc brake setup that unfortunately, while it looked great in, in uh, theory execution, it wasn't as good. So if you've got a Corvette that's been stored for any length of time, uh, most likely when you pull it out, you're going to have braking issues, all right? And what I'm gonna do is show you guys what happened. We pulled this one out. So I've had this one in storage probably the last year. I haven't really paid much attention to it other than just make sure it was secure. So as I went to go start it, I brought it home. Notice really quickly, you can see my brake light there. We uh, got her cranked up and our brake light's staying on. Okay, so sometimes that could just be an issue, right? But that's gonna tell us we've got low brake pressure somewhere in the system. So now accompany that with, uh, we've got a, you can see here, see that pedal going all the way to the floor? I have no braking power almost whatsoever. Now I already went ahead and took a look at the uh, master cylinder and determined that I did not have any uh, brake fluid in the rear master cylinder chamber. So that tells me that the rear brake calipers, there might be a leak or something somewhere. So um, what I'm going to do in the next few minutes, I'm going to go ahead and take the back wheels off the car and show you guys what we're working with so I can give you a little bit of description on how everything works. I'll be right back. Okay guys, we're back. As you can see, I've got the back end of the car jacked up, uh, both wheels off the ground so we can take a look at the rear braking system and the brake lines. 
uh, and see what we're working with here. Obviously, you'll want to use jack stands. And in my case, with an inclined driveway, it's absolutely necessity. You put blocks in front of the front wheels so it does not roll back on you because the front wheel brakes are not activated on a car. Just so you don't know, and I'm not, I'm not treating you guys like kids, but just want you to understand if you're watching the videos and you're not as familiar with jacking up cars, that's one of the most stupid car guy mistakes you can make is to jack up a car and kill yourself with it by not properly supporting it uh, because a car weighs, you know, most cases almost two tons. So um, make sure you've got, like in my case, what I do is I put a jack stand and I put an extra jack under there for an extra support in case my jack stand fails. Um, but I just do that because I want everybody to be safe and I'm real big on that because that's a, that's a really dumb way to get killed guys when you're doing something that you love and we're all into this for our hobby so I just wanted to take that quick minute so anyway um, let me give you a quick rundown on how the C3 braking system works here C2's so um, if you're familiar here's of course a reservoir this one's actually newer I think I replaced this a couple years ago so it's not really old and here is your power brake booster right here of course with a vacuum assist it's run back to uh, manifold pressure basically there's a line that goes back in here. You can't really see it on the Corvette, but it's real far back inside of there. It actually plugs directly into the intake manifold, so it uses engine vacuum to operate. So on uh, a Corvette, like I said, you've got a dual reservoir system here on the later cars. Now, the earlier disc brake cars did not use a dual, um, uh, I'm sorry, a dual, uh, not canister is what I'm trying to say, but a dual reservoir system and you've got your lines going out here, back to here. And then what they do on a Corvette, in this case, can't really show it very well, but I'm gonna try. Uh, back in here, beside our, beside there is a proportioning valve, okay? And what that valve does, as I accidentally turned off my phone there, sorry about that, is it distributes the brake fluid from front to rear. Obviously, front's gonna get more braking power than rear. And you can see in there, there's a switch on top of that. That's what tells me there's low brake pressure in the system. So that's the basics of the system. Not very complicated by today's standards, but it is the way it is. So as we walk around here, you're gonna see our brake calipers on the car. And brake calipers are mounted, obviously, right here. Nothing complex. Brake line goes in here. You can see I don't see any fluid leaks right here. Uh, my, my rubber hose looks pretty good. It's not collapsed. So, you know, I'm typically pretty sure there's not going to be an issue there. Uh, we follow this along. We look at it. And we look at our caliper, and the caliper is dry. So this is a four-piston, like I talked about. You've got essentially two halves to this. It's got one half here you can see the line right here uh, a little bit there it is and they're joined together you actually have bleeder screws on a corvette on both sides of this to get fluid all the way through the system because the fluid comes through the body here into the other side and circulates actually it starts here comes over here and then back again so these actually have two bleeder screws to get the fluid the air out at their highest point okay because bubbles are going to rise obviously in a fluid system and then the cool thing about these is they use simply just a pin here that keeps them in place and there's your actual uh, pads right with two pistons on either side so that's your four piston you can see the back side of the, the housings right there so obviously this one looks good you know, I'm going to show you it was rather obvious when I pulled the wheel off and like I told you these brake calipers were great in theory but in execution there are some flaws with them so as we get over to this side you can see how grungy looking this one is, right? See how the body of it's all rusted and nasty? Well, what happens when brake fluid hits a metallic surface, it will actually corrode, it's highly corrosive, so it corrodes everything. So you can even see uh, the corrosiveness or the rust on here. So um, this is our culprit right here. We've got a leaky caliper. Now, the reason why the calipers on the Corvettes get leaky is because in their infinite wisdom, Chevrolet used a, uh, a metallic body, a steel bodied caliper. This is our replacement caliper here, along with, in conjunction with aluminum pistons, which was great, right? 
high performance for the day. But what happens is, you can see the pistons here, the dissimilar metals between the aluminum and the steel body cause them to develop pits in the body of the pistons. So what that did was it allowed the brake fluid to seep through right here. And in fact, that one is seeping right through one of these pistons because I checked it before I got back on video there. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this new brake caliper on, bleed the system again, and I think we're gonna be in good shape. So as you can see, the brake caliper literally only has two bolts that hold it in place. Uh, they're on the back side, of course. Not as easy to get to, um, but there's one right there. And there's one over here on this back side. So, uh, and of course one feed line for brake fluid. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take that brake caliper off on the other side. And I'll be back with you guys in a second to show you uh, what I did. Hang on just a second, I'll be right back. Okay guys, we're back and as you can see, I've got the brake caliper removed from the Corvette trailing arm assembly. And if you've ever seen a Corvette trailing arm assembly, this is kind of an interesting, I know I've talked about rear suspensions in uh, one of the other videos I've done that I've got a link to right above my, uh, at the top of the page there, you can see that one. But this is that uh, intermediate or first independent rear suspension Corvette had, first style with the uh, steel trailing arms that are right there in the pocket of the frame. This is where Corvettes will commonly rot out from northern cars. You can see there's really nothing on this car because it's been a southern car its whole life. No road salt. Um, in fact, this car's never been even out of this city the whole time. Uh, it was a one owner car out of this town, as a matter of fact, where I'm at. So, um, as you can see, uh, trailing arm attached to a universal half shaft and then the center differential is right in there, mounted there on the frame assembly uh, with a transverse uh, leaf, uh, steel leaf spring. But, you know, like I said, the caliper's off and it was obvious once we pulled it off, you could see, see all the brake fluid on the surface of that. So what it was doing was it was just leaking out of one of these pistons here. In fact, that piston right there. So um, there was our culprit. Uh, we'll save this brake caliper as a core to return because they don't manufacture these anymore. They're basically uh, too old for that, and we just rebuild the new, the old ones that we have and we just recycle them. So that's what happens. I, no, I, I take that back. They may remake a brand new brake caliper, but I know that on the rebuild side, we rebuild a lot of them. So uh, scratch what I said before. So give me a few minutes. I'm going to get back to you. I'm going to put the new caliper uh, on, and we'll go from there, and we'll bleed the system and test this thing out. Be right back. Okay guys, I am back and as you can see I've got my new uh, brake caliper installed here with my bleeder screws obviously to the front and up so that the fluid bubbles will actually travel in that direction to the highest point. Of course this is just a dummy stop here because what they do is they can switch the bodies of these interchangeably when they put them together. Now for my purposes I did clean up my brake pads and put those back in but I do not recommend that when you've got fluid contamination because that can just cause other problems. But uh, I've been doing this a while, so I'm going to go ahead and roll with that, and I'll probably change these out. In the next few weeks, I just want to get it back together for right now, and as you can see, these are extremely simple to pull the brake pads out of here. There, of course, is our, bleed, our uh, main feed line right there and our bleeder hoses, so all that's left to uh, wrap this up is we're going to bleed it real quick and then uh, go ahead and take a road test. So uh, give me a minute. I'll give you guys uh, one final... Uh, look see as we've got it back on the ground and uh, we'll go from there be back in a second okay guys we're back with the finished up product we've got our car back on the ground again uh, bled and we're gonna go take it for a little road test here and see what we've got to do but uh, this will probably much conclude our video for the day of uh, a little troubleshooting on C3 C2 C3 Corvette uh, braking systems and what normally fails like I said uh, nine times out of ten, you're always going to have an issue with the um, uh, caliper itself leaking fluid from there. So uh, if you get into uh, any of these older Corvettes or start to buy one, make sure that's the first place you look if the brakes don't work. And if there's no fluid in the reservoir, it had to go somewhere. So I want to thank everybody again for taking time to watch my videos. I've really enjoyed making them for you guys. I'm going to keep on doing this, play, uh, show you guys a few more things I'm going to do to this one before I get it back uh, on the street again for the winter and maybe take a few cruises in it and bring you guys and girls along so uh, if you like the videos please uh, hit the like button comment hit the subscribe button so that way i can keep making you guys more videos get some feedback on what i'm doing uh, right and what i'm doing wrong so until then next time we'll uh, check you guys later thanks again